to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now have the role taken by staff liaison Jeanette Berard. Chair Maria? Here. Vice Chair Mortimer? Here. Commissioner Allen? Here. Commissioner Belding? Here. Commissioner Burt? Here. Commissioner Gitt? Present. Commissioner Guerra? Present. Commissioner Pasta? Here. And Commissioner Sylvester. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Now is time for our public comments. This is a time in our meeting when we invite members of the public to state their concerns or share uh, senior related issues in our city to the commission. Um, I don't have any speaker comments. Is there anyone in the audience that's interested in speaking? If not, we will move on. Item five is our liaison and agency reports. Item 5A is the Goble Adult Community Center, and our Commissioner Posta is our liaison to the Goble Center Commission and coordinates all of our updates. Commissioner Posta, please introduce this portion of the meeting. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair Maria. Patty Ham, who's a director over at the uh, Goble Adult Community Center, couldn't be here today, so I'm going to try to fill in for her. We have a number of seminars coming up, uh, which is very, many of them are very, very important. As you well know or may not know, Medicare changes are being made uh, for 220. So on Friday, October 11th at 1 to 3 o'clock, uh, we're going to have a little seminar. This year, 2020 will bring many Medicare plan changes, which include changes in Part D, Medicare Advantage plans, Medigaps, Presentation will prepare you for Medicare's open enrollment coming up October 15th to December 7th. When you're enabled to compare your current plans and if necessary, change your Medicare Advantage plans. Please come by. You could call 805-381-2744 uh, for reservations. Uh, Elder versus Old and Done, Friday, October 25th at the Goebel Center. You can't help getting older, <clears throat> but you don't have to get old. Really? Join Sally, Kathleen Morris, and Rory Kaddish Lamboy for an open and lively conversation for what it is, it is to be elder versus old and one. The issues discussed will be concerns that the participants bring to the table. Open discussion. Our intention is that you will leave this conversation with an experience of freedom and fun. Please call again for reservations at that standard number, 805-381-2744. We also have a bunch of seminars on your driving tests, senior fitness. Check the Global Gazette for uh, dates, times, and where you call this number for reservations if needed. Some are just drop in. Uh, we have parties over there at the Goebel. It's, it's party time in October, as it is every month over there. What's, uh, what's the October dates? Well, Goebel's Center's uh, annual Bratz and Beer Oktoberfest will be held on Saturday, October 12th, 5 p.m., $10 per person. Join us for a night filled with fun, dinner, dancing, friends, and, of course, beer. You can purchase tickets now at the Goebel Center front desk. Only 10 bucks, such a deal. Also, on 31st, it's Halloween, so let's have a Halloween party on Thursday, uh, October 31st, 12 noon to 2 o'clock. Join us if you dare for a Halloween scare at the Goebel Haunted Mansion Lunch, Music, and Costume Contest. You can purchase tickets again, $10 a person. And that's it. Although there's loads of other stuff, check the Goebel Gazette to bring you up to date. Thank you. Thank you, John. Our next item is 5B, and that's the Caneo Senior Volunteer Program, or CSVP. <laughs> Commissioner Posta is also our liaison to CSVP, and I'm going to ask him to give us updates for this portion of the meeting. I got to work today, I guess, because Julie Spivak can't be here today either, so I'll try to stand in for her. 
uh, highlights of uh, the program for October, the 2020 Wellness Fest. Interested in becoming a vendor at next year's Peace, Love, and Wellness-themed event? The 2020 Wellness Feast will be taking place at the Goble Adult Community Center on January 15th from 9 to 1 o'clock. This event is focused on all aspects of wellness, including nutrition, medical care, senior services, and more. It's, a, it's an annual event, and there's usually a really big turnout because there's loads of wonderful information there for seniors. If you want to sponsor one of the, uh, one of the locations, uh, pick a sponsorship package today at the CSVP office at the Goble Center or call our standard number, 805-381-2742, for more information. The CSVP Boutique. It's located inside the Goble Center. They just opened up a new space on September 16th after undergoing extensive, beautiful renovation. You can stop to shop for handmade blankets, <coughs> excuse me, baby clothes, aprons, and other unique items. Do not miss out on our 50% greeting cards. Again, such a deal. Come by and visit us Monday to Friday from 9 to 4. A hundred percent of the proceeds go to support CSVP and our wonderful volunteer programs. On August 11, CSVP, along with 19 nonprofits, raised over 35,000 for their organizations in the charity karaoke Sing for a Cause event. Wonderful! Everybody had a great time. Thank you again to the volunteers and agencies who helped make this event so successful. If you're interested in new volunteer opportunities, uh, such as being a docent at the Stagecoach Inn Museum, tutoring children at Title I schools in Conejo Valley, becoming a CSVP income tax preparer, God, who wants to do that? <laughs> Reading to children at the TO Library or helping at the Alzheimer Walk. We have something for you to really give your time and efforts to all of these wonderful opportunities. If you are interested, just drop by our office at the Global or call us again at that number you're getting tired of hearing, 805-381-2742. Thank you. Thank you, John. In addition to being an advisory body to city council, the Council on Aging also <coughs> appoints commissioners to act as liaisons to the Ventura County Aging Agency on Aging. This year, our commissioners are Commissioner Gitt and Commissioner Posta, and they've been selected to serve on the VC AAA. Commissioner Gitt, will you please introduce item 5C, the VC AAA portion of our meeting? Thank you. Um, California's aging network for older adults and adults with disability consists of 33 area agencies on aging. The agencies coordinate, administer, and implement a wide range of program services and advocacy efforts for older adults and persons with disability. In Ventura County, the agency is known as VCAAA, which is for Ventura County Area Agency on Aging. Some of the programs that VCAAA administers include caregiver support, nutritious meals, legal advice, medical assistance, and transportation support. Um, although Commissioner Post already talked about Medicare open enrollment, I want to go into a little more detail on it. Um, Medicare open enrollment occurs from October 15th through December 7th. If you are new to Medicare, you can enroll in either original Medicare or Medicare Advantage. If you already have Medicare, you can change your Medicare health plan and prescription drug coverage. And the new coverage begins January 1st, 2020, not 2120, I see there. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you haven't already gotten your Medicare handbook, they're free, and it's a wealth of information on what's available, and it even has specific information of what's available in our county. So you can order a free copy if you haven't already been sent one uh, by calling 1-800-633-4227. That's 1-800-MEDICARE. Uh, or you can go online and just Google Medicare and you handbook. This thing is about a half an inch thick, but uh, it really has all the details if you're either enrolling in Medicare 
or are interested in Medicare Advantage. So you really should have a copy and review it even if you're already a member of Medicare. There are two kinds of Medicare. There's the original Medicare and Medicare Advantage, and I'm just going to go over a few of the uh, comparisons with you, not any of the great detail. But with original Medicare, you can go to any doctor or hospital that accepts Medicare. If you have Medicare Advantage, you must use the doctors and hospitals that are in the plans network. Medicare pays about 80% of the approved amount, and then you can get a Medigap policy um, for the additional 20%. In the Medicare Advantage, many of the out-of-pocket costs uh, are paid by the plan 100%, uh, and some of them include drugs. On uh, prescription, on the original Medicare, you have to get a Medicare Part D policy for prescription drugs uh, that will be covered. Next uh, chart, please. Another feature of uh, VCAAA is their HICAP program. Now, HICAP stands for Health Insurance Advocacy and Insurance Program. Trained HICAP counselors can review your circumstances and help you decide what kind of health and prescription drug plans are best for you. In addition to health coverage, you can list your prescriptions, and HICAP will run their computer search programs to determine which Part D plans will cost the least. Free help is available. The transition to Medicare can be daunting, and understanding the plan options and the costs associated with each plan is often overwhelming. Uh, you can s talk to expert counselors to help navigate your Medicare selection. And I think, as John mentioned, there are going to be four uh, opportunities at Goebel during the month of October and November, October 21st, October 28th, November 4th, and November 25th. And if you fill out the prescription drug search form, there'll be a uh, trained uh, counselor there to go over the opportunities with you at one of those meetings, which you can schedule. For more information, uh, visit uh, www.vctaa.org or call 800-434-0222. And then this chart here shows uh, all of the other opportunities in Ventura County, and I know you can't read it, uh, HICAP and VCAAA would be going around to all areas in Ventura County giving the same kind of information. So if you're thinking about Medicare or ne thinking about changing, this is the time to get involved. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gitt. In addition to serving on the Ventura County Agency on Aging, we are fortunate to have Commissioner Gitt with us as he's also been selected to serve on the California Senior Legislature. Commissioner Gitt, will you please introduce item 5D, the CSL portion of our meeting? Thank you again. <clears throat> Can we go to the next chart, please? Uh, the California Senior Legislature was created in 1979. It's a nonpartisan, stand-alone state agency funded by the state and your taxes that works to enhance the quality of life for older Californians and their families. CSL consists of 40 senior senators and 80 senior assembly members who are selected from around the state. I happen to serve as a senior assembly member. CSL meets in Sacramento each fall in the same chambers that the actual elected officials uh, meet in for the Senate and the Assembly. And uh, hearings are held where proposals are reviewed and hearings refined and prioritized. CSL members then seek state lawmakers to sponsor the proposals and work throughout the year to ensure adoption of the proposals. Since its creation, 210 bills introduced by the CSL have uh, affecting seniors have been passed into law. Uh, next slide, this is an eye chart, and if any of you can read it, you'll get a candy from Francine after the meeting. <laughs> but one of the biggest things that's going on here is that uh, Governor Newsom has, uh, starting with his state of the state speech in uh, January, and then on June 10th, issued an executive order to create a master plan on aging by October 1st, 2020. It seems like a long way off, but it's just a year off. Um, Governor Newsom highlights Hyphen's focus on seniors in his executive order. He has stated that California values older Californians and is committed to building an age-friendly state 
so that Californians can age with dignity and independence. California's over 65 older population is expected to increase by 4 million to 8.6 million by 2030. And in fact, there'll be more seniors in the state than there will be children by 2030. On August 15th, a Master Plan for Aging Stakeholder Advisory Committee was created. The committee will work across sectors to develop a roadmap that envisions a future where all Californians, regardless of race, economic status, or level of support, can grow old safely with dignity and, and, and independence. Next slide. There are currently 26 CSL-sponsored bills in the state legislature. As of mid-September, two had been signed into law by Governor Newsom, and two previously approved had been funded. Over the next uh, several Council on Aging meetings, I'll highlight some of these bills and explain what's going on with them. Um, but it's uh, as the senior demographic grows, it's very important that uh, seniors understand what's going on because the state really isn't as prepared as it might be for this increasing demographic. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Our next section is item six, which is commission reports. And at this point, I'd like to ask Vice Chair Mortimer to introduce this section, section of the meeting. Thank you, Chair Maria. The Council on Aging researches a number of items of interest to seniors throughout the year. I will introduce commissioners who will provide current updates. Item 6A, Emergency Preparedness. Commissioner Gitt, would you please give that report? Hello again. Uh, can we bring up the next slide? Yeah. So emergency preparedness in California is an interesting topic. Are you prepared for fire, local and wildfires, earthquakes, storms and lightning strikes, power outages, active shooters? Lots of things to think about. The challenges of emergencies and the need for planning are clear. Last year, we survived the, fly, the fires, the rains, and the shootings. Are you ready for the next disaster? Is there an evacuation order? If there is an evacuation order, what will you do? If you remain at home, do you know how to shut off your gas, electricity, and water? If local tele telephone service is down, have you designated someone out of area as your emergency contact for you and your family? Do you and your neighbors know what special needs each of you may have? To begin with, you need to make a plan, conduct a self-assessment, and assemble a basic kit. Basic kit might include medications, water, food, a flashlight, radio, extra batteries, extra clothes, blankets, first aid kit, a dust mask, whistle, and a plan for your pets. California is a wonderful place to live, but we have fires, floods, earthquakes, shootings. Make your emergency plan now, and I'll start talking about more details in the next Council of Aging meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gitt. Item 6B, scams and fraud. Jeff Burt, Commissioner Burt, would you please give that report? Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Mortimer. Hi. Um, I've spoken previously about a number of different scams that do affect seniors, talked about romantic scams, grandchild, grandchild Medicare, IRS. Well, we're here to kind of give everybody a bit more education in terms of how to stop some of these scams. Uh, please mark your calendars, October 24th, 2019, 1 to 3 p.m. at the Grant Brimhall Library in the Marvin E. Smith Community Room. We're going to have the Stop Senior Scams Acting Program, and they've been featured on Spectrum News. They use theater improv to dramatize senior scams, and it can be seen, of course, if you have on YouTube, you can Google that, and uh, they'll be they'll see you'll see some of the scams uh, that they do portray. Members of the troupe range in age from 65 to 100 years old which is kind of interesting. They write and perform skits based upon their own real life experiences. Uh, each of them has been a target or a victim of a, a particular scam. They use drama and song to highlight, share, and teach the, uh, this troupe brings theatrically laughter and music to put the spotlight on often frightening vulnerabilities. Um, it's very. It's a very interesting group of people. Uh, they're well known. They've actually been recognized by the U.S. House of Representatives and the California State Assembly. 
so they've got a lot of a lot of good press. They're going to help seniors like us, all of us, help become more aware of the current day scams and the strategies to prevent becoming victims. Again, it's on October 24th. It's at the library in the Marvin E. Smith room. It's between 1 and 3. You do need to make a reservation. There is a number to call, 805-765-1066, um, or email vcaapc at gmail.com for reservations. That's, again, 805-765-1066, or email the vcaapc at gmail.com. This is brought to you by a number of uh, sponsors, and uh, you can see them up there. We've got Wells Fargo, we've got Mission, we've got health agencies, of course. Uh, we've got Buena Vista, of course, the City of Thousand Oaks, and the City of Thousand Oaks Library. Again, what I <coughs> always say at the end of some, one of these presentations is, you will probably be the target of a scam as a senior. However, you do not, and I repeat that, you do not have to be a victim. And so, again, October 24th, 1 to 3, make your reservations now. It will sell out. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. At this time, I will turn the meeting over to Chair Maria. Thank you, Donna. Our next item is item seven on the agenda, and that's our guest speaker. I do want to take a moment to remind our audience members there will not be any questions during the meeting itself by the audience. But if you do have a question, you can stay till the end of the meeting and ask him directly. Um, the council, however, will be permitted at the end of the presentation to ask questions if they have any. Um, at this point in time, Vice Chair Mortimer, will you please introduce the guest speaker for today? I will. Thank you, Chair Maria. Mike McManus is responsible for managing the Veterans Services Office and its staff. The primary mission of the VSO is advocating on behalf of Ventura County's 40,000 veterans, as well as the 10,000 military personnel in the county and their families. The office connects veterans with their federal and state VA benefits, as well as with local resources. Mike deployed for three major operations to USAFE headquarters staff for Operation Allied Force in 1999, to Kuwait for Operation Southern Watch in 2002, and to Kuwait for Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003. He was also stationed in South Korea from August 1996 to February 1998. He ultimately retired after 20 years with his last assignment as the first sergeant for the Air Force Detachment at Naval Base Ventura County, Port Wyneme. Mike serves as a member of the Executive Board for the California Association of County Veterans Service Officers, as an advisory board member for Reigns of Hope Equine Therapy, and is a member of the Greater LA Region Community Veterans Engagement Board. Please welcome retired U.S. Air Force Master Sergeant Mike McManus. Thank you. So I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Mortimer uh, for the invite today. And uh, so we'll, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So a little bit of context, uh, if you will. So when you see there that top line VA, um, federal VA, and then we have every state has a uh, state level VA, California Department of Veterans Affairs, or in California, they like to refer themselves as CalVet. Now that can be a little confusing uh, for some people. They think, well, maybe I didn't enlist in the service in California, so I'm not a CalVet. Or maybe I didn't retire from the military in California, so I'm not a CalVet. If you are a veteran and you're in California, you're a CalVet, okay? And then 30 states and a couple Native American tribes in Puerto Rico have county veteran service offices. So it brings it down even much closer uh, to veterans, especially those states like California, Texas, Florida that have large veteran populations. Okay? But essentially, any county veteran service office is going to be able to do the same thing. Connect vets, family members, and in some cases military personnel where, when they're getting close to getting out with their federal and their state level benefits, but because we're county, we know what's going on within uh, our local communities. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. So 
York County Veterans Service Office, been around since 1937. It was the fifth one uh, in the state. So we're fortunate in California, primarily because we have you know 1.7 million veterans uh, living in the state more than any other state. Uh, Texas is close, and Florida, but we've we've got them both beat. Um, but uh, yeah, we were the fifth county veteran service office in California, and we're fortunate where there's an office in all but one little county up north where they've got 20 or about 1,200 veterans, and there's disagreements with other counties where those veterans go and uh, are seen in the adjoining county's veteran service office. But really there, as you can see, it says veterans, their dependents or survivors in obtaining those federal, state, and local benefits. That's our charge, if you will. Our mission, now, Within the county, we fall under the Human Services Agency, and then Adult and Family Services, and then Veteran Services. So the mission there is the HSA mission, strengthen families, promote self-sufficiency, support safety, health, and well-being. Within the office, though, really the motto, if you will, is improve veterans' lives. If we're doing something counter to that, it's a waste of time and a waste of tax money, and we need to change it. So improving veterans' lives, that's what we're there for. So. 1.7 million veterans in the state of California, as I already said. In Ventura County, we have roughly 39 to 40,000 veterans. Uh, that population is decreasing. Uh, we had large drafts from World War II and then, of course, Vietnam. Uh, whereas the last 18 years with Iraq and Afghanistan and ongoing operations, we just basically use the same 3.5 million people again and again and again and again. Okay, so what we figure by 2045, there'll be approximately 18,000 veterans in Ventura County will be our population. So when you look at some of our adjoining counties like Santa Barbara, I mean, they may have four or 5,000 veterans. Uh, but uh, what we're finding is, and I'll get into this when we talk a little bit more about some of the benefits, um, our younger generation uh, of veterans now uh, primarily because of some of the weapons that were used or currently being used and things like that with a lot of blast injuries and that kind of thing. Uh, we're finding that they've got many more uh, injuries than what um, you know previous generations uh, did. Also, the number of days in actual combat is much greater now uh, than it was even during World War II and in Vietnam. Okay, So we've got fewer veterans, but of course, we're all aging and many more issues. In fact, some, some reports indicate that, you know, the toll that being in the military takes on your body, whether it's two years or 20 years like myself, is it really it actually ages the body uh, 10 to 15 years beyond the chronological age. So you figure you put that into um, the mix along with, you know, their service-connected injuries, their aging inju injuries, um, and that kind of thing. So it's it will definitely be a group that needs uh, some care. Um, Kind of that cost benefit, if you will. So the majority of our funding comes from the oper uh, the general operating fund of the of the uh, county. The state does contribute some funding. Uh, the feds contribute absolutely none, even though that's who we primarily work with. Uh, but if you look at uh, fiscal year 1718, so already uh, you know some older data. We'll have some newer stuff probably next April. But those 56. Uh, County Veteran Service Offices, over five, or well, basically half a billion dollars in new money coming in to those veterans. I mean, that is huge. So especially, I mean, it's a great return on investment for the state, um, considering they contribute $5.6 million to all 56 offices, and yet we're bringing in, you know, half a billion dollars. So it works out well for them. Uh, but really, the main thing is improving our veterans' lives, because this is just what we call compensation and pension. And I'll talk about that. So really those monthly monetary benefits, it doesn't take into account, you know, treatment for post-traumatic stress or just any kind of medical condition. It doesn't take into account any VA construction that's going on or education, other benefits and stuff like that. So it's certainly the number would be higher than that. But just in compensation and pension, $505 million. So my staff, we've got actually 10 people um, hopefully, uh, here very soon, and uh, we're spread out throughout the county. Our main office is in Ventura County, or in Ventura, rather, uh, but we've got uh, 10 different field offices to make it as convenient as possible. Uh, certainly Thousand Oaks, uh, John Jackson is at uh, Supervisor Parks' office every Thursday, um, you know, Simi Valley and that kind of thing as well. In fact, for those of you that are actually here in uh, the council chambers, 
Uh, hopefully you picked up uh, one of the flyers and uh, you know if you just kind of flip through that well one of those flyers is I think it's the second one actually lists the main office and all of the uh, the field offices and things like that so to make it as convenient as possible okay so just some of the things that we assist with on the local um, side uh, employment so we work certainly not just with you know the state and county employment there's you know uh, nonprofits like Goodwill Goodwill got a large grant from the Walmart Foundation. They have had for over five years. They've got a great program uh, um, connecting not only veterans, but family members of veterans with employment uh, as well. Um, certainly indigent burials, you know, if we have a veteran who passes away, no one claims the body, the county will have that body cremated and, and interned at a national cemetery like every veteran should be uh, buried with those, with those honors. Uh, information and referral. Any veteran can call the office and I'll give that number here at the end, can call the office and even if, if they think it's not even remotely associated with the veteran, more than likely through that veteran collaborative of Ventura County, and again for those in council uh, chambers in that flyer pack, it's got a little additional information on that, but that collaborative has 115 individuals or organizations that are on it, faith-based, nonprofits, other government agencies, you name it. So if my office is not the direct service provider, chances are we will know who is. So really we function almost as a 2 on one for anything military and veteran, okay? Uh, we will go into the jails, hospice, if we, uh, hospitals, uh, if we've got a veteran or maybe a surviving spouse of a veteran who is not ambulatory, can't get out of their home or their hospital bed, whatever the case might be, uh, we're completely mobile. Uh, laptop, printer, scanner, you name it, we can pack up and go wherever we need to go uh, in order to kind of meet uh, the veteran or that surviving spouse wherever they're at. Uh, advocacy, you know, we get all kinds of questions, you know, hey, why is this policy that way? Or why is this, you know, particular procedure this way? And we can ask the question to whoever, you know, might be appropriate to ascertain why is it that way? Um, and it could be a, on a number of things, could be housing, could be education, could be any number of things when it comes to uh, veterans. Veterans Treatment Court uh, started probably 10, 11 years ago out in Buffalo City, New York. Fast forward now, there's probably 450 veterans treatment courts nationwide. In California, um, probably 30, 32 of the counties have veterans treatment courts. We've had ours since November of 2011. So if we've got a veteran who gets on the wrong side, you know, spends a little time at Todd Road Jail or whatever the case might be, and we can tie their theft, their DUI, their DV, their assault, their brandishing, whatever it might be, to military-related post-traumatic stress, traumatic brain injury, major depressive disorder, whatever it might be from when they were in the service, uh, then they could be uh, allowed into Veterans Treatment Court. It's a treatment model, not incarceration. So we get them the treatment they need plugged into other resources because certainly putting them in jail, much like what happened after our Vietnam vets came back, did absolutely no good for, for anyone. So we have to address those root causes uh, and not just some of the symptoms, like that DUI is merely a symptom, uh, there are obviously um, limitations, you know, if that's DUI and yet they cause gross, uh, you know, bodily injury to someone, that would not be appropriate then for vet court, okay? Uh, but we have about 170 individuals uh, in at one stage or another in veterans treatment court, and it uh, literally it's not a second or third chance, it's probably a last chance uh, for, for some of these veterans uh, to help get their, uh, get their life back together. It's an amazing program. Uh, so... There's other things going on, you know, locally, but, uh, you know, uh, with time in mind here before I get a yellow card or anything. Um, assistance with state issues. So probably, well, not probably, the state-level VA benefit that most veterans make the most of is that California College Tuition Fee Waiver. Um, again, there's a little more information in one of those packets if you picked one up. But what that is, if the veteran is disabled, in other words, they come to my office, we look through their service medical records and they still have ongoing medical issues with whatever might be tied to their service. We file a disability compensation claim with the VA. The VA, what we call, rates them. In other words, yes, you're this disabled because of your service. Um, if that veteran is rated by the VA and then uh, there's programs, there is one for spouse, but primarily for children. Uh, so a child of a disabled vet, if they go to a community college, Cal State, or a UC, the state will waive that statewide tuition and fees. So that's a huge benefit. 
you know, obviously, you know, at VC, good, great place to get a start, not that expensive to begin with, still save you some money. You transfer out to CSUCI, maybe down to UC San Diego, Berkeley, UCLA. Uh, so definitely one of those uh, great benefits. Last year, we did about 650 to 700 of these, uh, and that's in Ventura County. You can imagine what San Diego, uh, LA, San Francisco with larger veteran populations do. Uh, veteran designation on a California driver's license or state issued ID card. So uh, 2014, uh, then Governor Brown signed into law, making California the 13th uh, state that does this. Basically on a veteran's uh, driver's license, uh, the DMV will put the word veteran. It's a way that we, uh, basically within the County Veteran Service Office, we verify honorable veteran service. Simple form that the vet then takes over to the DMV and the DMV then puts veteran on um, their driver's license. Costs them one time $5 fee. If the veteran you know, goes into Home Depot, Lowe's, a restaurant, whatever the case might be, they're not carrying their DD-214, their discharge document with them. This is a legal uh, document that shows that they've got honorable veteran service, okay? Now, the whole idea was uh, really to get veterans into the County Veteran Service Office. The idea is not to give you uh, a driver's license with veteran on it. It's to assess, were you injured in service? Do we need to get you connected with VA healthcare? Do you have post-traumatic stress? That was the real intent of the program. However, comma, it's kind of that, you know, it's a carrot and then, hey, it could be even a bigger carrot uh, when you come into the office. So that's uh, a little bit about veteran designation on California or on the, uh, the driver's license. Veterans license plates, uh, if the veteran is disabled, uh, we can assist with that. Again, employment services with the state, we work with, you know, the employment development department and, and that sort of thing. Uh, CalVet or the California Department of Veterans Affairs, they offer uh, farm loans, home loans, and they are an actual lender, all right? So they, um, you know, through bonds, they actually lend money to the veteran for the purchase of a home. Uh, Veterans Homes of California, we're fortunate to have one of eight uh, in the entire state uh, that's in Ventura. Now it's a 60-bed facility and assisted living. Uh, you do the math. Um, 1.7 million vets, median age of a male vet, 64 for a female vet keeps going up because more and more, you know, women uh, are transitioning from active duty, you know, and becoming veterans. So that's going up. It's probably about 55 right now. Um, so the majority of California veterans will not see a CalVet home. It's just simply the math is not there. Um, so it kind of goes into that overall master plan. Uh, whereas, you know, maybe the state isn't really planning for it. Well, the VA is not really planning for it. I mean, they're aware of it. They're trying to do some things, but it's here. Um, so, um, and we can talk more about that if you have questions about some of the more specific kinds of things that are done for elderly veterans, if you will. Uh, property tax exemptions. If we have a veteran who is 100% permanently in total, in other words, it's never going to change, uh, service-connected disabled, then... Um, they will, basically it's a waiver of a certain amount of your property tax, okay? But again, the vet has to be 100% service connected, so there's a lot going on um, before that occurs. So our bread and butter and where we spend the vast majority of our time are on federal VA issues, okay? So we've got access and connections with federal VA folks that we work with daily. So maybe if we've got a uh, veteran who had less than an honorable discharge. So if they don't have an honorable discharge, then they will be barred from certain VA benefits, if not all VA benefits, okay? Depends on the situation and the veteran. So we can help them upgrade that so that they can get, you know, some of the care, maybe even a monthly monetary benefit as well. Uh, survivor benefits. If you have a surviving, if we have a surviving spouse, there's two primary monthly benefits. One, if the veteran passed away from something that was service related, and then another one is a survivor's pension, okay? Both are tied to the veteran service, all right? And then we see what we can do as far as assisting that survivor uh, with one of those potential uh, benefits. When it comes to the veteran, Disability compensation, which I've alluded to. So if a veteran is injured while they're in service, they become ill while they're in service, or they're exposed to something while they're in service. 
So most people think Agent Orange, absolutely, back to Vietnam. Could also be between 68 and 70 uh, when it was sprayed along the Korean DMZ. Could be in Cambodia, or not in Cambodia, in Thailand, uh, at the Royal Thai Air Bases, uh, at some of the Air Force bases with the aircraft that were used to spray it and things of that nature, all right? Um, to more recently, we've got burn pits, uh, Iraq primarily, but some in Afghanistan. So everything was bent, was burnt, human waste, medical waste, you name it, right? Uh, so consequently, depending upon when that afternoon sandstorm came in and the wind kicked up, who knows what toxins were actually going through camp, okay? So there will be some medical conditions tied to those toxins that are in those, you know, fumes, vapors from the burn pits, just like dioxin and things like that from years past, okay? So what we do is we assess the veteran. We help them get, you know, medical information, maybe information on where they were stationed, when they were stationed there, whatever it might be. We prepare the forms. We interact on their behalf with the VA, which makes most vets very happy. Um, we can track and advise the veteran uh, on status of their particular claim because, as I said, we have access to the VA systems. And if something, we've got a question, we've, we've got contacts with people that obviously, you know, this is what we do. So most people would not have access to these people. And we can find out what's going on with their particular claim. Now, you've got a lot of very good people working in the VA uh, that are extremely overwhelmed with uh, just the number of claims or the amount of, you know, um, medical need. Uh, however, they've got lots of things to fix, um, but uh, we work with some really good people, and between us, we'll get it figured out for the veteran. So that disability compensation, now that can range, it's a tax-free benefit, it can range from $140 a month up to $3,000 a month uh, for a single veteran. And if the veteran, you know, has ALS, if they've got Parkinson's, it can certainly be uh, even more than that, okay? Now... Disability compensation, it doesn't matter what your income is. You could be a millionaire, and if you were injured in service, you file a claim, you're going to get disability compensation. VA pension, on the other hand, whether it's a pension for the survivor or it's a pension for the veteran, is an income-based or a needs-based program. Okay, So we look at everything, earned, unearned income, assets, I mean, wills, trusts, you know, does, does the house sit on two acres of land? I mean, we look at it all, okay? And we prepare these forms and we send it off to the VA and, and that kind of thing. Aid and attendance is if that veteran uh, or in some cases a surviving spouse uh, needs someone to come into the home, provide some care with those essential activities of daily living. Or maybe they're in assisted living or even in a nursing home, okay? So it's an additional amount that can be paid on top of disability compensation or pension, okay? It's not a standalone benefit. Uh, there's some companies out there that say, hey, we're gonna get you $2,000 in aid and attendance. They're what we call pension poachers, okay? They're there usually to sell something uh, to the veteran, usually an annuity or you know something along those lines, or they charge the veteran, which is illegal, and we love getting information on that so we can share it with the the um, VA's Inspector General in LA, and they determine whether or not they're gonna go after the individuals. Um, but all of our services are completely free of charge. No one should ever pay to have someone do a VA claim for them. One, it's illegal. Two, you go to someone who you can trust, and that's gonna be us in the County Veteran Service Office. So uh, educational assistance, we talked a little bit about that. At the state level, there's some at the federal level as well. Funeral and burial assistance. I definitely want to touch on this. If you've got a, uh, maybe a veteran was never injured in service. Maybe they make more than the threshold to qualify for pension. Okay. So maybe the only benefit they ever use is maybe they use the, um, like most vets, especially, you know, previous generations, GI Bill for their education and home loan. Okay. And then at the end of life, funeral and burial, or what we call memorial, okay? Now, that could be uh, a marker, uh, whether it's, you know, granite, bronze. Uh, it could also be a niche marker if the veteran wants to be, you know, cremated, that kind of thing. If the um, uh, there's, you know, the burial flag, there's an honor detail, things of that nature. Um, so every veteran with honorable service is entitled to these benefits. There's also burial within a national cemetery as well. Okay, if that's what the veteran 
uh, once. We're, we're blessed in California. We've got, we call it uh, the National Cemetery in Bakersfield. It's actually in Arvin. It's in the mountains, absolutely beautiful. Uh, Riverside is another one. It's actually the largest one in the VA system. So um, if someone wanted to be buried, say in, in Arlington, that cemetery belong, National Cemetery belongs to the Army. So they set their own very, very restrictive and special uh, requirements on that. Government life insurance, I won't spend too much time on this, but uh, and usually where, where it applies is if an individual is killed while they're on active duty, or uh, for some of our World War II uh, widows, um, uh, where the policy had been paid up on, and it was actually a whole life policy, it might have been three or $10,000, but, um, you know, Harold paid for that when he got out of the service and he paid for 30 years, was paid up. He put it in the, the shoe box and said, Merle, when I pass away, you take this to the VA. So she brings it in, we look through it, sure enough, and then she can get that $10,000 lump, lump sum. Um, home loan guarantee, that's the federal VA is not a direct lender, so they will guarantee a certain amount. Um, basically, it lowers the risk for a lender because if a veteran were to default, that lender is still gonna basically be, be, would be paid by uh, the VA. Uh, homeless services, certainly there's a lot um, of talk, a lot that has been done, a lot that can be done. When it comes to homeless services, there's a lot that's at the county level, and then of course, non nonprofit, faith-based, and that kind of thing, but the federal VA as well. So there's various things down in LA that we can plug homeless veterans into. Of course, you've also got uh, Ormond Beach by Mini Mansions, which is getting ready to open here pretty soon. They're going to be housing uh, homeless veterans or you know low-income veterans with families. Uh, you've also got uh, adjacent to the Calvet home in Ventura. There's about nine and a half acres adjacent to that. Yeah, it won't be a. Uh, it's it's a city um, initiative uh, along with U.S. Vets um, to develop uh, about 120, 140 unit. Um, units on that site. So, you know, again, that will certainly help with our homeless veteran issue um, and frankly, some resources that your general public um, would not have. Um, if we've got, uh, you know, if a veteran needs substance abuse, post traumatic stress, any of that, you know, psychological uh, counseling, we're very blessed in the county to have a VA clinic that's in Oxnard. And uh, they've got five uh, psych docs and a couple of mental health social workers who do great work. We also have a VA vet center that's in Ventura, uh, down in Santa Clara. And basically, they are veterans, several of them are combat vets, um, who are LCSWs or MFTs or substance abuse uh, counselors, uh, who now counsel combat veterans, survivors of military sexual trauma, or any of our Gold Star families, okay? Uh, let's see, uh, da, 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 Small Business Administration. You know, maybe if we've got a veteran who wants to start uh, their business or they wanna learn how to, you know, uh, receive contracts from the state and, and things of that nature, we can work with them on that. Um, if a veteran was, you know, injured in service uh, and they need to retrain into some civilian occupation, vocational rehab can, can help with that. Um, so again, some of our locations, as I said, you know, for those of you in the room, our flyer is there, but we are, we try to be as uh, accommodating as we can. Uh, let's see. The main phone number, if anyone has any questions, uh, our phone number is 805-477-5155. And they can call that number. I ask that you be patient because we get lots of calls. We had about 22,000 last year. Okay. And remember, there's 10 of us, uh, so it uh, keeps us pretty busy, but we will get to you. But again, call with any question you might have uh, at that 477-5155 number. All right. And that, in a nutshell, is veteran services within Ventura County. Thank you very much, Mike. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for Mike? Jeff? A great presentation, by the way. Thank you. Very yeah. encompassing. Um, one of the biggest issues, and and is I'm, I'm sure, is the homeless, the growing of homeless veterans, and that that number seems to get bigger and bigger. And what 
does the organization do in terms of outreach? It's one thing to have a program for all of these services. and However, how do you get that? How do you bridge that gap to get it to that homeless vet who may be in an encampment somewhere? Sure. I know a number of counties do outreach. They in, you know, enlist the sheriff's department mm -hmm. and other multidisciplinary agencies to go out. So where does the w your organization sit yeah. with that? So as far as the, uh, the uh, veteran services office, we don't have, you know, like a social worker who does outreach. So we'll partner with um, uh, County Homeless Services and Chris Russell and his team who have social workers who do that, uh, or Turning Point. Uh, Salvation Army is another one. You know, we have social workers who are actually, you know, part of their grants is to actually do outreach and things like that to go find these veterans. Um, also, I mean, we receive calls just from individuals. I mean, once we start seeing one veteran and we start, you know, they end up, maybe we get them connected, say, with that VA pension, uh, means they got a little more income in their pocket. Believe me, that gets around. Uh, and they will, uh, they will find us as well. But uh, we also have a course, you know, through Claire Hope and her outstanding organization with the stand down that's the end of July. Uh, you know, that's certainly, you know, a, a good resource there. But we also have some VA partners, federal VA partners um, that uh, are in Ventura County, you know, that are social workers and are touching base uh, with some of these organizations. Uh, and then, of course, they refer to us. So the office itself does not have someone that's out there. Uh, you know, in the river bottom or whatever, but we partner with a lot of organizations that then, you know, that do that street outreach, if you will, and then refer individuals uh, to us. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, John. Uh, yes, that was an excellent presentation and very comprehensive. Uh, I learned an awful lot of uh, what I didn't know. Uh, your uh, agency, what is the biggest challenges you face right now? I would think one of them would be the awareness like an outreach that uh, the commissioner uh, uh, addressed of uh, mm -hmm. how to get people to still be involved, the public per se, because we have such a short span with search memory, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's, that happened years ago and, you know, and we're just not interested anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is, is that a real problem? Uh, you know, that's really, int we're, we're, there's a saying that we had in the service where, you know, after 9-11, America's military went to war and America went to the mall. Okay. Now, that's it's a double-edged sword because that's what we want. We want you, you know, civilians to go back to your normal everyday, taking the kids to school, going to the mall, going to football games, things of that nature. But then, you know, here we are 18 years later, you know, still in Afghanistan, and people go, we're still in Afghanistan? Or we're still in Iraq? Yes. There's still lots of bad people out there. But I won't jump up on my my soapbox here, but yes, that, that, that is, um, um, uh, can be an issue, uh, just kind of that whole awareness and things like that. But we are very blessed to be in Ventura County where we're big enough where we have a lot of resources, uh, not just you know from the county or the cities, but nonprofits and faith-based and whatnot, where we don't have a lot of infighting because we don't have you know, a lot of duplicative resources. Uh, and like, again, you know, through that uh, veteran collaborative, we actually come together and play really well together to help that veteran. One, to the awareness is, and kind of goes back to the original creation of the collaborative, is who does what in Ventura County so that that veteran isn't the one having to find it themselves. Uh, if they're in crisis, that's the last thing we want that veteran to do is try to figure out who do I call because you know what, the, they won't call. They'll stay in their mom's uh, basement with the fifth of Jack playing video games until something really bad happens, all right? So the awareness part of it is uh, me coming speaking to you. All of our different outreach events that we do and through that partnership with all those other individuals that are in that collaborative, it's like a force multiplier. When I send something out to them, those 115 organizations, I mean, who knows where that you know invite or that information, that particular benefit ends up. Uh, because it goes out through all kinds of networks that I'm not even aware of, all right? But it starts with going out through that, um, that network. Now, back to why we're blessed in Ventura County. We've got Navy Base Ventura County. We've got the 146th Air Wing, which they always make sure I, I explain. Shares a runway on Point Magoo, but is very much its own base. Okay, so a little plug-in for the Air National Guard. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got, you know, National Guard armories. Uh, I mean, we, I mentioned the stand down and uh, the Ventura uh, armory is where the stand down is held. So we've got a lot of individuals that are 
you know, we're a medium, medium sized county as far as veteran population, 39, 40,000, but we've got, you know, a good 10,000. Uh, and on any given day, you're going to see some of them, you know, CBs or what, uh, what have you, in uniform, walking through the mall or having lunch or whatever. And that is good for any community. It's good for the kids, especially. It's good as a reminder that, oh, that's right. They're still here and they're still going out. Um, I think we do, you know, when the, the, in, you know, like the VC star says, hey, you know, NMCB5 is returning from another deployment. You know, that's good uh, because it brings that awareness. On the awareness side is you've got a lot of veterans who are not aware of the benefits that they've earned through their service. So again, you know, an event like this where we get the word out or any of the other, you know, outreach that we do, but really that, that is definitely something. We get calls all the time, especially from the World War II uh, generation and certainly the surviving spouses where I had no idea. And it's their adult children who are coming forward saying, oh, we could have used this, you know, years ago, but, you know, thank God we're getting connected now. So that's part of it as well. If, if you know someone who served in the military um, or, I mean, really, that's who you, that's really all you need to know. And then, hey, 477-5155 so that we can get them connected. So I think the awareness all encompassing. Uh, to remind the public that, yes, your military is still very much at war. We still very much lose um, warriors all too frequently. Another thing is awareness about 22 veteran suicides per day. It's actually 20 veteran suicides and two on active duty per day. This year is going to be a record, unfortunately, for the Marine Corps uh, or for uh, the Air Force. Um, I mean, absolutely, just th there's a lot that goes into that. It's a very complicated uh, issue. Um, but just that awareness. I mean, if you've got some psychologist out there and goes, you know, I wish I could do something, you can. Give an hour. It's a nonprofit. You know, they sign up and they, you know, uh, give an hour free counseling uh, to a veteran. So there's a lot of different ways. Um, you know, if someone wants to volunteer or whatever, uh, that they can call my office and we can, you know, suggest you maybe, hey, there's this organization that could use some help or you can assist in this way and stuff like that, especially with uh, Veterans Day uh, coming up. There's a lot of ways that individuals can do more than just say, you know, thank you for your service. There's, there's a lot of tangible ways to do that. Well, thank you for your service. That was an honor to serve. Thank you. Any others? Yes, Rosanna. Um, you touched, thank you again for the presentation. It was very informative to me. And again, thank you for your service too. Thank you. Um, touching upon homelessness and homeless services, I'm more concerned about preventing homelessness and I'm wondering if a military veteran has been served an eviction notice, do you help with rental assistance or do you also, if it's a homeless veteran, do you help um, have them with um, rental deposit or short-term rent payments until they get themselves back on their feet? Yeah, so again, not my office per se, but we'll work with both county homeless services and Salvation Army. Salvation Army has a grant okay. through, uh, well, from the VA. It's called a SSVF or Supportive Services for Veterans Families, which will cover, um, you know, the first month's utilities, um, uh, deposit, things of that nature. Sometimes we have to marry some programs together because one doesn't say necessarily pay maybe for moving, but the other one does pay for, you know, the first month's rent and utilities. Uh, so that's where we reach out, and we're working, you know, with different organizations hand in hand uh, for these particular veterans. But they should contact you if a veteran oh, yes. is um, in need of rental assistance because they're mm -hmm. um, about to be evicted. Mm -hmm. They should contact your office. Yes, yes, um, because a lot of the benefits, you know, um, somewhat Salvation Army, certainly through uh, the county, are income based. Yes. So you know, maybe for whatever reason. Um, they're being evicted. However, they don't, uh, they're not eligible for some of those other programs. We have some other resources through, um, you know, foundations that can actually assist with that. But yeah, we, we assess that situation and we look at it. Maybe they need some kind of, you know, financial coaching so we can get them tied into that as well. Maybe they've never filed anything for, you know, disability compensation so we can get some, you know, income coming in. Uh, maybe they're on Medi-Cal. Right. You know, that kind of yes. thing. So we look to see, all right, should they stay on Medi-Cal or can we get them on VA health care 
uh, frees up that Medi-Cal. The state actually has a, a program called Medi-Cal Cost Avoidance. But we look at it from what is going to be best for that veteran at that particular time. So anyway, yes, they should definitely contact us because it's more than just that. Well, it's always more than just that, you know, eviction notice. There's a lot that goes into that. So. Do you, and you also help, and I'm thinking about our senior population who may not think about the fact that they w did military service. Mm -hmm. You know, as you mentioned, they may be thinking, you know, you know, I just got an eviction notice. I'm on a fixed income. They, you know, raised my rent. What can I do? So do you also help them legally with fighting that eviction, or do you provide any type of legal assistance with that? Yeah, so we, uh, the VC Bar uh, Association, they used to have a free veterans legal clinic and things like that, and that's kind of changed a little bit. But there are four or five different legal uh, aid um, clinics, if you will, that would assist. So there's no specific one for veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, if you look at, say, um, this is where we partner with the Ventura County Area Agency on Aging and their ADRC, oh, okay. uh, the adult, and yeah, yes. exactly, uh, with Gray Law and oh, things like yes. that, which is an yes. absolutely amazing resource um, and can really help out our seniors with, you know, not just an eviction, with, with any type of a thing. So like I said, it's, um, uh, we tend to kind of, you know, be that hub, and then we are, there's a lot of spokes coming off that wheel, depending upon whatever that veteran might need. And I just have one more question. You mm -hmm. mentioned the um, veterans home here in the county, and again, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about our senior population, sure. and you mentioned that, you know, obviously the demand exceeds the supply. Mm -hmm. So if we have a senior who's military or who's a military veteran, do you then work with maybe other um, veterans homes in the state to see if there's possibility for placement if they qualify? Yeah, and, and it really depends upon, you know, what level of care they need and, and things of that nature. You've got Yachtville, who's the oldest, you know, by Napa, absolutely beautiful, of oh, course. Yeah. Um, the oldest, it's actually the oldest um, vet home in the nation. It wasn't too long after the Civil War that it opened. But anyway, um, so yes, um, we work with um, uh, the home administrator and Barbara Burroughs who does the admissions for the vet home and she can actually then work because usually it's an adult child is usually involved you know with mom or you know dad the veteran uh, that's working you know gathering paperwork and things like that um, so yes we will work with them and then they'll any from Chula Vista all the way up to Yachtville depending upon what they want but what we found is no I do not want to leave Ventura County okay. while there's nothing here but so it can be challenging. Um, but they should also contact your office. And even though you said that there's only 80 places, right? 60. 60 that, you know, it might be the possibility mm -hmm. that they should contact you and you can kind of work with them oh, on, absolutely. on problem solving mm -hmm. with that. Well, yeah. And another thing, if, you know, if you're, if uh, there's also um, three, um, the VA has contracts with three nursing homes uh, within uh, the county. There's one, there's two in Oxnard, one in Ventura. So depending upon if that veteran is 70% disabled uh -huh. or more because of their service, uh, then, you know, that veteran is then eligible for, you know, a VA nursing home, could be skilled in home care or placement at one of these three. So, I mean, that that's another thing. And yeah. most veterans aren't even aware of that fact. Um, and if we get them, you know, service connected, say, hey, you know what, you're 80%. And you need skilled, you know, care, uh, whereas before, I mean, no one prepares for need, the need of skilled care and $300 a day in uh, that price of that care, um, you know, unless you've got, you know, some kind of private insurance or, you know, in the case of veterans, you know, you're 70% or above. That is a huge benefit that we try to get vets connected to. I have one more quick question, I okay. promise. Um, do you provide transportation to the hospital um, um, the one in West LA, or if they need to go to the VA hospital in Long Beach, because maybe you may not have specialty care here. Yeah, they won't. Okay, so the way VA healthcare, if the vet's enrolled and they've got an appointment in West LA, or maybe it's Sepulveda at the clinic down in Sepulveda, um, the VA will transport them from the Oxnard Clinic down and back. Now that doesn't always work, you know, for each veteran depending upon where it is. The disabled American veterans, the DAV. Uh, runs a shuttle, um, and they're in Simi Valley, and they're in Ventura, and, you know, you call, you schedule a time, they have certain pickup points, and then they simply transport uh, the veterans as well. Now, sometimes that works, sometimes, you know, it doesn't, but for most vets, it works most of the time. Now, 
recent law has changed that if you're a veteran and you're enrolled in VA healthcare and you need to see your primary care doc and they say, you know, it is going to take, uh, it's, it's going to take a month. Nope. It can't take any more than 20 days. If it's going to be more than 20 days, then the VA must schedule you for something in the community. Okay. It, specialist care, obviously there's, you know, longer time frames and things like that. But the whole idea comes out from about five years ago and the death in the VA hospital in Arizona and, you know, the Choice Act and all those different things to try to get veterans sooner quality care uh, other than, but outside of the VA, if you will. So maybe a veteran needs, um, uh, they're living in Ojai um, or, you know, even in Ventura. And the VA says, yeah, you got an appointment in West LA. And you're like, you know what, that's going to take me more than 30 minutes to get there. And the VA will then have to schedule for something that's in the community. Uh, that's a recent change uh, as of June, because for the longest time, the VA said, if you are within 40 miles of any VA medical facility, like our little VA clinic in Oxnard, uh, hey, we've met our obligation, if you will. And we always argued, if you've got to go to Sepulveda or West LA, I mean, it could take you, it, yeah, it could take you 45 minutes or it could take you four hours. And then you got to come back. So we always argued for that. And that's one thing where uh, Congresswoman uh, Julie Brownlee being, was very instrumental, uh, given where she sits as, as chairperson for the, uh, the Veterans Subcommittee on Veterans Health, uh, getting that through and things like that. So even if a veteran you know, can't be transported down to uh, a VA facility, uh, depending upon the situation, they could receive local care uh, because of what was once called choice and is now called a Mission Act referral. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, Stephanie, a quick one? Uh, yeah, I do. I think I have a fairly quick question. Um, thank you again for your service and really for a wonderful presentation thank as well. You. Um, you mentioned that there were um, California college tuition fee waivers mm -hmm. that included um, statewide waivers for the children mm -hmm. of the veteran. Mm -hmm. My question is that many of our uh, military that enlist, like like in our family that enlist in California, mm -hmm. but then many years later when they retire or separate from service, they're mm -hmm. living in sure. pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. So can the children still qualify if they, it, does it have to do with where they enlisted or, or where, cause no. they aren't living here anymore right, because right. they weren't stationed here right. at the time of separation. So, so long as it's based on the child's residency and the, each college will determine what that means. And it's usually of course, you know, around a year. So if the veteran, doesn't even have to leave here. They could be living in Arizona or Maine. But if the oh. child is a resident yes. and then their veteran mom or dad, whatever the case might be, is rated by the VA, then yes. away we go. We look at their income and um, like this year it was $13,064. Well, most undergrads are making well below that. Okay. Um, as long as they b keep below that threshold, We've got some that go for their master's degrees. And those are disabled veterans we're talking about. Disabled they have to be veterans. rated disabled, right. okay, which, which and, and, some and of these it, are. It, and sure. it varies, yep, yep. Okay. But yeah, we get them, we help get them rated, um, okay. whatever percent disabled the VA says they are. Yes. Uh, and then we, absolutely, then we look at the child, the child's income, the child's residency. Okay, and, that and residence, kind of this is child. Of the child, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much. You're welcome. And I just have a quick comment. Uh, my husband's a Vietnam vet. And we went to, I guess you call it a veterans fair in Camarillo. And you mm -hmm. go in and all the people that are gonna help you are there at this fair. And that's where my husband got started and met Mike. And Mike was able to find papers that had supposedly been burned in mm -hmm. Louisiana, his discharge papers or army papers, whatever. Um, he was awarded the bronze star but was not credited with it because there was a number transposed on his social security number, so it never got credited to him. But because of Mike, that was fixed, and my husband received the credit for the bronze medal, a new certificate and a new medal that is now on his record. So if you ever come across one of those fairs, I guess that's what it's called, is a fair. Yeah, I mean, uh, we used to ha hold them in Camarillo. Uh, this last one uh, was held October. Uh, August 24th uh, at Oxnard College. 
And yeah, really, it's a um, job fair, and Assemblymember Irwin, who's very supportive of uh, our veterans, and given the fact that she's on the Assembly, she chairs the Assembly Veterans Affairs uh, Committee, uh, her office and Nancy Frawley organize a, um, a job fair, and then my office organizes a resource fair. So it's a, a job and, you know, veteran resource fair. But we had something like 60 employers there, you know, looking to hire vets. We had various, um, you know, we had... Ooh, probably 40 to 50 service providers from the collaborative there to answer, you know, a, literally a one stop. And, you know, we had food trucks and food carts and horses and dogs and all kinds <laughs> of stuff. It, it was a really good time. So next year, August uh, 22nd, Oxnard College. So I'll be coming to you with more on that. Well, my husband finally gets a check from the government, I mm -hmm. guess, mm -hmm. the compensation that he should have had from yeah. when he got home from Vietnam. Well, and that's, so thank you. Yes. It was definitely my pleasure, and that's one of the things with, like I said, these are earned benefits because of your service. We hear that all the time where veterans go, ah, save it for somebody, you know, another vet, or no, I don't want anything to do with these. You know, we are going to address whatever your issues might be right here and now, and then we'll certainly do the same for the next, you know, brother and sister uh, when we meet with them. But this is because you served, and when you came out of the service, something wasn't quite right. Um, and... We may never, ever be able to make that right, but through maybe medical or psych services or, you know, monthly benefit check can at least help with that. Thank you, Vice Chair Mortimer. And I do want to mirror my colleagues and thank you for your service and thank you for sharing with us today. This information is of tremendous value for our community, so thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Our last item on the agenda before we adjourn is commissioner's comments. And this is a portion of our meeting where our commissioners can provide announcements. And as a reminder to our commissioners, these are announcements only. There will be no action or discussion. So does anyone, I'll open it up on this side. Does anyone have a comment? Commissioner Gitt. Um, the Caneo Valley Village, which many of you know is a nonprofit all volunteer organization helping seniors stay in their homes and remain uh, active in the community is having a recruitment meeting on uh, October 23rd at 3.30 p.m. in Goebel. If anybody is interested in either volunteering or uh, becoming a member, that would be a good source of information for you to learn about the village. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on this side? Any comments? Commissioner Burt? Uh, thank you. Just a quick one. Uh, several weeks ago, the city of Thousand Oaks sponsored a homelessness uh, seminar uh, that was over at the Share Forum, and I happened to be in attendance. It was an excellent presentation, and I encourage everybody out there to go on the website. You can probably get a, uh, see this particular presentation. Uh, it's called, it would be on tooaks.org backslash create change, and um, the city does sponsor a number of different uh, presentations throughout the year, and this was an excellent one. I suggest everybody who has a chance can review it again. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes. Uh, just a quick shout out, the uh, Thousand Oaks Long Range City Plan. Uh, they're in mm -hmm. the process of updoing their 25-year plan, and they have a series of various uh, community forums and what they're calling pop-ups. So there's actually a community forum tonight from 6 to 9 at the Share Theater, and there's a petite presentation by an author of um, Happy City. So they're um, suggesting that that might be something interesting. And again, they want input from the community, all stakeholders, including seniors. Mm -hmm. So if you get on their website, it's like TO 2045. And I did it today. There's actually a short survey you can take and answer about what you see as the vision for the city, um, what you see as the positives, the negatives, how you'd like to see that unfold. And then there's um, also on the website um, a bunch of pop-up workshops in various locations. One on the 10th at the Farmer's Market. This is all in October. One on the 13th at the 25th anniversary of the Civic Arts Plaza and one at on the 20th at the Rotary Street Fair. So again, it's a great way to get your voice heard and your concerns about the city and where it's going met. Thank you, Commissioner Sylvester. Any other comments? Okay, before we adjourn, I do want to 
Share a few reminders. Our next televised meeting will be November 6th at 1 p.m. And our guest speaker will be Leanne Olin. She's a life coach and motivational speaker. Um, I would like to invite everyone to join us here live, but if you can't, you can watch the broadcast televised or you can watch it online at TOTV. It's www.toaks.org slash TOTV. And if you'd like any information about the Council on Aging or you have any questions about the agenda items we discussed, please call 805-381-7362 or email councilonaging at toaks.org. There being no further business to come before the commission, the Council on Aging meeting for October 2nd is adjourned.